Hi, uh, I'm Kamlesh Bablal and my co-author uh, Tom Romataka. We both work at uh, Linux kernel team at Oracle. And uh, the talk is more about considering uh, the challenges and other things when you know you want to move to uh, C group V2. So yeah, this is our statement. And uh, I want to rephrase the classic question which we keep you know, asking again and again. Why aren't users adopting C group V2? So I would ask is like, who are the persons who are not, you know, who are the users or the workloads who are not adopting C group V2 as such? And feel free to comment uh, in between. It's more of, more of like an initiating an open, so an open discussion on things. So I would say like enterprise uh, workloads uh, who have built their resource management using C group V1, they, would, uh, they are hesitant. And uh, you have like runtime or orchestration tools which have integrations which are built you know, around C group V1, or we have the infrastructure providers who have to support the hardware or the images or any, any workload their customers are running on you know, C group V1. And uh, the major reason for hesitation would be is like there are a lot of unknowns of the unknowns, right? Uh, if you consider the barriers as such, uh, from the kernel perspective, it, it might be that you know, uh, the workload might want to move, but uh, the problem they might be having is like, uh, what if their current kernel or the current version of the distro is not you know, fully supporting C group V2 as such? The reason being is if there is going to be a problem, there should be someone who needs to fix it. Because it might be the currently they might be you know, supporting C group V1 as the default kernel. And uh, secondly, it's not that, that straightforward that when you're going to say, like, move from C group V1 to V2, it comes with a lot of complexity, and the way it is done is little, you know, it, the assumption is completely different as such. And it's not a straightforward uh, movement. And uh, above that, it happens is like, what if, if the workloads or uh, the customers are going to use like the whole stack, and it's not needed, the, the components in the whole stack is like every one of them are currently supporting V2 completely. So that might be a problem. And uh, the thing is like, uh, what if, if one particular component is not supporting it yet? That means that the whole, uh, the topmost person who's using the whole stack has to wait till he, he or she, I mean, get the uh, support for uh, support for the component as such. And, uh, oh, uh, so what I personally feel is that like most of the projects, there are like too many uh, projects around in the whole stack. If you're going to say the whole, uh, from kernel, uh, then you have the distributions, uh, then you have the uh, runtime, the orchestrations, and all the things. Uh, everyone are doing their bit to you know, move to C group V2, and, but everyone is in silos. I mean, uh, we don't speak to each other much, and that's a, a kind of a problem because uh, the topmost person or the user of the whole stack has no idea on or the timelines on when or how they're going to get you know, the uh, support for the uh, stack. The reason being is like, if there is one particular component in the whole stack is not supporting V2, and if the person wants to find the alternative, that's going to be uh, very hard because they have to make sure the whole stack goes through the uh, testing or you know, validation, and, and, and I know it's so robust as like what they are currently being using on. Uh, oh, uh, so if you're gonna see the host and the guest, and the guests are the ones which would pick up the C group uh, V2 faster, uh, for the obvious reason is like uh, um, the host again has to support you know the older versions of uh, v1 as such and uh, this creates a big problem because it's a mixed workload host is running v1 and the guest might be running v2 uh, consider this if you're going to do resource management you have to do it uh, differently for v1 the way you're doing resource management and for the guest it's going to be completely different because it's uh, yeah, because the way the resource management is done, for example, uh, you're going to enable controllers is completely different with V1 and V2. And same applies for monitoring, right? You have certain interfaces for V1, and the interfaces are different for V2, and if you're going to run APIs, those are going to be different for both of them. So it, it becomes harder for, you know, for the host and the guest compatibility as such. And, uh, oh, consider this. What if, if uh, the applications and uh, other workloads which are running in the top have their own set of monitoring tools or own set of test CIs which they have written for their own product, which is completely under the assumption of C group V1, and they're not going to move to V2 because, uh, just because it's available, and uh, 
it's going to be hard for them because they have invested a lot of time in the, to make that particular infrastructure robust. And same thing you have to apply for the host thing also because there might be the resource, uh, there might be the people who are maintaining the infrastructure could have written a lot of scripts around it, uh, monitoring scripts or you know uh, uh, any uh, any other kinds of scripts which are not open source but it is just internally used. Uh, asking them to uh, move to V2 is going to be a little harder. So uh, the whole goal of this presentation is like, uh, is that anything we can do? Uh, given that Plumbers has uh, representation from all, uh, whole of the ecosystem, from kernel developers, uh, from the distro people, and orchestration tools, runtime, and everyone all together, is that something we can do? Or uh, this is just, I don't know, initiating the conversation of, you know, how do we help everyone to move to Secret V2 as such. I mean, uh, yeah, just, just before the question, like, I mean, Lenath is no longer in the room, but he kind of forced everyone's hands not too long ago uh, by yeah. literally ripping out Secret V1 support out of System B. Uh, so we're going to see that, like, that's going to force everyone to start making a decision now. Uh, yeah, so I, I just wanted to say something like that, that it's not ripped out yet, but it's very obnoxious to use, uh, starting with system D 256 and 250, maybe not seven, but eight will probably rip it out. Yeah, and at that point, it, we already are in kind of that weird situation where, because people don't like starting system D with the crazy flag saying like, please don't do this, but still I want my CGP one thing. Um, so we're kind of already getting into that position where like now you deploy a physical machine, you have to choose what it's going to get to run. Either it's going to get to run, you know, potentially, I guess, RHEL 10 or whatever might be on the newer system D maybe. Uh, so we might be like, okay, you can deploy a RHEL 9 machine that can run RHEL 9 and RHEL 10, but can't go RHEL 7, 8 or something because it's that one is V1. And you're going to have to make those decisions. Something we've been able to avoid up until now because the way to avoid it is like, do C group V1 and ignore V2. Um, and that fixed it for containers, but yeah, I think we're at the end of that now and people are gonna have to move. I mean, I, I think the, I think sort of the death certificate for this thing was signed back when C group V1 was merged, right? Like where the fact that you can't practically have a compatibility thing means that it's just like, especially since everything, anyone who turned it on for any reason found out everything that broke, and then we had to fix all those things, and people had to fix all those things, and then we figured out what other things broke, and so on and so on. So I think, um, like, I'm, at this point, I'm sort of wondering, like, it, is it actually too late to, like, and, like, is it the case that we've already broken so many things because of, because of this that it's, like, um, sort of, how many projects are we actually going to help by, by doing anything about it because they've already had to deal with all these problems. I mean, like we had all the JVM and like every runtime had, had breakages with V2 and every, yeah, all these tools. I mean, obviously for closed source stuff, that's, that's it's different, but um, yeah, because like the thing we talked about at the time many years ago was um, if we were to have a, a combat layer, I mean, like it wouldn't be, you couldn't do it as a file system, but like if we had like a, like we were talking about before with the resource stuff, like he was talking earlier, if we had had a library people could use, then we could, hide some of the breakage, but we already broke so many things that I, yeah. Yeah, I think that's right, like, like pretty much every single piece of open source software at this point already has two code paths and yeah. deals with both or tries not to and uses the system they, they can. Uh, but for anyone who directly interacts with C group, we've got both code paths and actually just can't wait for C group one to actually be dead so we can remove half of our code. Um, like obviously for, yeah, for, for closed source code base, it's going to be more of a problem uh, where, I mean, it's going to be like, well, you're running very old crap. You're going to have to run a very old kernel setup too, right? Uh, uh, like, you're going to have to keep... Yeah. So, uh, okay, I, I was about to point out when this. Uh, consider this, right? Uh, the distro layer as such, uh, you have OL7, I mean, Oracle Linux 7, or something which has default, C group you want, and we need to support till 2029, and you have... 8, or OL8, Oracle Linux 8, which would be like 2032. That mm -hmm. means that C group V1 is going to linger around till that. And uh, from the kernel perspective, uh, all the feature and development is just going to be C group V2. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. And uh, memory controller and CPU set as if now, uh, the isolation has happened. They have separated the V1 and V2 code with the configs. And the question to ask is like, 
there are going to be controllers or there are going to be other controllers who are going to do it sooner. So uh, might be someday uh, we might just have a config which says don't enable cgroupy1 at all. In some future kernel, I'm not sure. It might be there. Or uh, then coming to systemd and just like uh, we had the command that it's going to drop the support as such. But the question is, uh, there are two ways to think about it. Uh, are we going to default it? And the second option only is once we run cgroup v2 as a default for some time and then deprecate cgroup v1 as such. I mean, I, I'm speaking of the whole stack as such. I mean, it's not very specific to any uh, particular component of the whole stack. So it's just like these are the questions which I have. Mm. I was going to say, uh, like, you know, it, and, uh, for inter like for yeah, long term enterprise software, sure, cgroup v1 will still be supported, but you're going to have to run old software on top of it. Like the reality is that I expect that the container runtimes we're gonna be yanking out Cgroup V1 support from that within like two or three years. Like it's it's annoying for us to have to test both code paths. For the longest time, I think at least for on my side on LXC, Incas, all of those, we were testing V1 and occasionally testing V2. Now we're moving to testing V2 only and hoping V1 doesn't break. And if a user tells us it's broken, we'll go and do something about it. In the next couple of years, we're gonna just yank out v1 completely and if you need to run on a v1 system then you're gonna have to run an older version i mean yeah. thankfully a lot of that software has lts releases so you're gonna want to run an lts an older lts version of the software until your own distro is gone but supporting like yeah compatibility layer is not gonna really happen like with that's too late as we we're saying um so at this point it's like literally dealing with expectations and uh, so once the um, software stops supporting V1, is it time for the kernel to remove the code or make it so, uh, 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 dummy code? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to go in stages. It's, it's, right? uh, I would not say it's dummy code as such because, uh, okay, let's, let's take, go by the distro timelines, right? So uh, the timelines are there and you're going to say you have extended support. That exactly means that there are customers who are going to use it who are willing to pay till that particular year. We are speaking about 2032 or something like that. So that's still very actively used code. Uh, but from the kernel perspective or the kernel developer perspective, yeah, it's awesome to have uh, V2 only kind of a thing. But uh, I'm just looking at, I know, uh, I'm at the bottom. I mean, I just work on the uh, kernel side of things. But the question which I'm trying to ask is like, which I don't really understand is like, what's happening all the way from the kernel to the you know, topmost stack? So that's what I'm trying to figure out. I like to respond to Bishek's question. So it's partially already happening, as uh, I mentioned that now kernel code is uh, uh, sectioned or uh, divided into V1 only code, and uh, you can disable compilation of that. But uh, yeah, the kernel has, I think, big inertia, so it will be several years before or sometime, someone comes and says, okay, is there anyone who has this config enabled? Because I think it will be a very long time, so it will stay there, but I think there will be not so much focus on that. So we're gonna see distro turning it off soon, because like, if a distro yeah. uses systemd, and, and their systemd, like if a distro uses systemd, and a systemd build will not boot on cgroup v1, then what's the point for that distro to still build their kernel with cgroup v1 config enabled? They're not gonna, and that's, that's where we're gonna start seeing things moving. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the, 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 when it comes to stuff about the Saki, I mean, like, speaking about container runtimes, I agree with, with Stefan, where, like, run C and Docker, we're, like, we're going to rip out secret V1 support soon, I hope, because, like, it's, like, I think we, in theory, have tests for it, but it's, like, we run, like, CentOS 6 or something, or 7, to try to get a machine where you can even run the test to get the thing to work, right? Like, that's, that's going to disappear soon. And, like, so I, I understand the, the point of, like, okay, enterprise kernels will be around forever, but, like, you're not going to install Docker version 5003 on an old enterprise kernel because, like, it's just not, like, yeah, in theory, backwards compatibility, yada, 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 but, like, in practice, it's just not going to work. And, like, um, same thing is true with, like, a lot of uh, also upstream projects that have to deal with secret stuff, as we were saying, they've already had to deal with this because we already broke it. Like, um, it's sort of, like, it'd be nice, I mean, we tried to have this discussion five years ago, ten years ago, but um, obviously we just, had to, we just went with the breaking uh, variation, so I think... Yeah, I like, I, yeah. We, we would be talking about like slowly phasing it out if we had had that kind of, yeah, yeah. which we don't, so at this point we can. 
Yeah, I can tell you it doesn't matter what the defaults are. I'm, I work for a company with the evil uh, long-term users who won't convert, and we have people who are turning on V1 on, like, modern versions of Ubuntu because they haven't ported their app. So it doesn't matter what your defaults are. They'll build their own kernel. They'll do whatever it takes because they can't fix their code. So, like, I think, I don't think this is ever going to go away. I mean, it's just going to stick, stick around, as, as Michelle was saying, like, in the kernel, it's going to stick around for a long time. I mean, people can rebuild their kernel. They can run, like, another init system or an updated version of systemd to work around that part. And they can run then their updated software. That's fine. Uh, I think from a distro point of view, it's going to be, like, yeah. Yep. Systemd is forcing us down one path. We're going to be getting rid of building this thing in the kernel because it makes no sense to, to have it at that point, And that's going to be the end of that. Uh, Okay, I have this personal thing which I consider that the day uh, there, are, there is no go there's no demand for the distros. I mean, as an image, as a VM image, if you're not going to have distros which has C group V1 as default being demanded, that day we can be at least sure that, you know. You're there now, right? um, I think we're getting there. I doubt. No. I mean, V1. Oh, uh, but applications are there, like you said, there are like... Yeah, yeah, we have applications, yeah. but distro distros, but like if yeah. that's your heuristic, you're pretty close. Yes, you I mean, Android. yeah, the new Rel and Slows, I mean, like, oh. I think I think everyone is, uh, at least the newest, newest version is Secret V2 of uh, at least all the distros I can think off the top of my head. Yeah, um, like yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think I think Slows, do you know if Slows, yeah, Slows is Secret V2, the, the newest Slows will be Secret V2, so, um, yeah. So basically yeah. this year, every single, like, Main for distro is going to be secure too. Yeah. Like it's, it's obviously there's, there's still like other older releases that supported for a long time for sure. But like as far as what you get if you run current version of distro, it's going to be secure too for everyone this year. And, and even and even the ones most stuff is already hybrid. But they're running on, yeah, they're not yeah. going to run on V1 only. They're going to be hybrid most yeah. of the most of the ones that are not on V2 yeah. only. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but there's another catch to it. I mean, like you know, you, you pointed out, you might give. Uh, default as v2, but as long as that is going to be compact compatibility mode in the grub, which in the kernel command line you can say that boot back to yeah. v1. That's gonna yeah, that's gonna depend on what version system they <laughs> include at this point. Otherwise, you're not gonna have an yeah. init system. Oh. That's that's, 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 <laughs> that's one way. I mean, like when we you know if I say this is what we're going to do, and you know you drop support for everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, 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 like we're getting closer to the point where it's gonna, the answer is going to be like, well, if you n have an application that's really, really needs you could be one, like run an old, an old distro in a VM, and that's going to be the, the answer to that, I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't think. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we more yeah. or less discussed, I, mean, uh, I was just asking, uh, uh, I like the memory management way of doing it, uh, memory controller. They did ask questions like, what is that which is holding you back to moving to Secret V2? Is there anything you can do from memory controller side of things? So that you know, we provide you exactly the same. I mean, that was a question asked. I mean, I'm not sure where the discussion went. And uh, is there anything we can do? Uh, take a status every year, or you know, publish timelines from the stack. I have no idea if you guys can do that, or we have guides, or we you know, share testing results, or anything which could help. I mean, it's just a discussion. These were the questions. I mean, these were some points I had. Yeah, I think uh, splitting the V1 code out behind their own configs, great. Um, publish some, you know, print K a deprecation message or on the K config or something. Make it obvious to someone who doesn't attend these meetings that you should not be adding new uses of this code. And a timeline would also be helpful for people who kind of know something's going on but don't know exactly when they have to act. Like it would be helpful to know I mean, when uh, do I have to act. From by. the kernel side of things, I, I could help or. Michael can do it, but uh, what, what I'm trying to ask is like, is there a conscience which says that people who are above the kernel, are, are you guys, what do you guys think and how, what is your plan? That's more of my question. Out of time. My perspective is uh, actually we want V2 semantics. Even the user who's stuck on V1 wants V2 semantics. Uh, it's just a matter of like changing all the code. So. I don't, I don't know that you guys can do much besides say, like, we're going to delete this. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like the system, the approach is actually going to help with that because it's going to force people who've been trying to put it off for a while to actually do it now. 
like I, there are a few tiny gaps here and there that we still remember, you know, like, like what NetCLS and that kind of stuff, where there's like no super good mapping. There's, there's a few small differences, but there are good workarounds around that, and most applications don't actually need this or can do it a different way. And in general, V2 semantics are much better. Yeah, yeah for, I mean, CPU memory and all that kind of stuff is way better. Um, so I think it's just kind of neat. Like we tried the carrots, it didn't really work, now we're going to go with the stick. And I, I, that's probably going to push whoever's left, I think. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks.